Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we're going to have a look at the latest Bodhi release. This is 7.0. They call it a landmark release. The biggest functionality of the landmark of this is that the Moksha desktop, which was forked out of Enlightenment, definitely a, a weird blending of window manager and desktop environment, uh, they have fixed this so it is no longer dependent on old legacy dependencies. They fixed up a lot of that and they gave us just a lot more smoother system with more up-to-date uh, dependencies, meaning a little bit more up-to-date, a little bit more modernized and secure system. They also have a 32-bit, which is based on the Ubuntu 18.04 LTS. And they have said, though, they are working on a Debian-based 32-bit version to replace their old legacy 32-bit. So those that are looking for another option for the 32-bit computer systems, they are going to have one based on Debian in the near future. So let's go ahead and start looking at their, uh, their release here, uh, their release announcement. So they call it a landmark release. They are bringing on a Bodhi 7 based on Ubuntu 2204 LTS. And mostly what they're doing, as I said, is they have fixed up a lot of the uh, the weirdness that was in the Moksha desktop. Now, they also have three different releases. They have a standard release, which is Linux kernel uh, 515 for just the general, much more stable, a lot more work is gone into purifying that kernel, making sure that it's just, it's rock solid. But they also have two extra releases for more modern hardware, the HWE release uh, and the S76. And I don't remember what those are off the top, but we'll have a look at that screen in a moment. So here's the major changes. It comes with a lot of improvements. They have the new S76 release. That does not stand for System 76, but you know, uh, which uh, features a more advanced kernel for those seeking cutting edge performance. The kernel updates are now enabled by default. So now we're getting new kernel updates with the update system. We have newer versions of EFL and terminology. Moksha no longer relies on depreciated libraries. And uh, the login screen is a much slicker look to it. Okay, cool, whatever. Uh, they they got the they got the the spit and polish going as well as uh, all the stuff under the under the hood there. The default theme has been changed to the Moksha green theme, uh, showcasing the animated background refresh splash screen. Okay. Uh, and then they have a quick start guide. They have a Thunar archive plugin comes pre-installed. And they have a web browser manager uh, based on the classic Zorin browser manager. Simplifies adding your browsers, which this is another one of these distributions that is giving us a lot of options for browsers. Although Chromium is the default, uh, not Chrome, but Chromium, open source version, is the default browser that is installed. But there is a nice tool that you can install what other other desktop and or, um, uh, web browsers you would like to use. They have key bindings uh, for, for uh, shortcuts and conveniently mem um, accessing the menu. And then we have iBar, iBar module now supports application instances, enhancing user organization. And the notification module has been restructured. Looks like it's the year for restructuring the um, notification bars. Linux Mint did that as well, which is probably a good thing. They have uh, a few different options now as far as which are the, the options. And they do have a fourth one coming. It's not out yet uh, unless they put it out in the last couple of days here. So the standard one here, uh, this is 1.3 gig download and they have 515 kernel, um, uh, kernel version. And then it, this is just the basic system, allowing a minimalistic base, allowing users to add exactly what they want. 700 default application set is terminology, Chromium, Thunar, Leafpad, ePhoto, A Randar, uh, Web Browser Manager, e, is it eGrandpa, File Archiver? Okay, and Grandpa? Okay, all right. Uh, Pulse Audio Volume Control, we have GNOME Language Selector and Synaptic Package Manager. We do have the HWE, which is coming soon. Uh, this is going to be uh, an, uh, the hardware enablement built on top of standard. Uh, and then it is all about catching up with the newest hardware technologies. So that is, uh, if you're having issues with the first one, uh, you should try that. This is the 6226 kernel and then the S76, also built on the standard with a more bleeding edge kernel. 
And uh, this one is a 646 kernel version. And uh, they do have a NVIDIA legacy PPA is currently only patched for support up to Linux kernel 6.3. So if you need NVIDIA graphics, don't use the S76. They do have an app pack, which is coming soon. They don't know how big it is. Basically, this is more like a, the Ubuntu standard build that has extra software installed. So we have the whole list of software here. You can see that there's a lot more stuff going on here than uh, just the, the basic uh, minimal system. So there you have it. You can download the ISOs. Let's see what is available for download right now. It looks like right now we have the standard, the HWE, and the S76. We do have the legacy release. Uh, this one is uh, based on the Ubuntu 18 system. And then they have your, your basic information over there. So uh, that is your, your basic idea. Here is the, uh, the base, basically the release notes for 7.0. So you have Ubuntu 2204. Uh, we have this, uh, the three kernels listed there, the Moksha Desktop 040-14. Uh, we have PPA um, uh, Mozilla Team has been added to the sources list. We have a PPA for NVIDIA Legacy, and we have Ubuntu backports have been enabled in the sources. So you have that. And then we have uh, a few other options in here, Chromium version, terminology version, and uh, their web browser manager is a GTK fork of the classic Zorin web browser manager for those that are interested in all of that. And then we have a lot of updates for Moksha, and then we have some, a lot of module updates. And then the extra modules, I believe these are ones that you can install extra. So those are what we have inside of our system. And with that, we're going to go ahead and boot up our system here. Now, I will say that I did install this before I jump over to, to the system. I did install it. The installation is nothing really fascinating. Um, my environment is VirtualBox, and uh, I did have issues booting into the system when I selected ZFS for the installation. Uh, the other major problem that I was having on the virtual machine, not something that I'm guessing that we're going to encounter anywhere else, and that is that the um, uh, the system is not uh, uh, the system is not allowing us to uh, boot full screen every single time. I basically have to fix this and uh, finding out where our uh, uh, where our monitor settings are is actually a little bit kind of crazy there. So here's your uh, virtual outputs, and we've got to fix this. Of course, if you're using uh, real hardware, you should not have this problem, but I have to do this every single time I come in. And for those people that say, oh, I'm using virtualization, I'm just in case you didn't know this, computer ignoramus, the whole world runs a virtualization, just shut up. Okay, yes, we use virtualization for testing. Um, there may be some people out there that use real hardware with uh, patched with, um, you know, uh, capture cards and things like that. Uh, that in and of itself poses other problems and other issues as well. So virtualization solves the problem for most people most of the time. So we're going to stick with running virtualization through the things that we're doing. But then also, this is a great way to test distributions out. Uh, so shut up about virtualization. I'm actually sick of that comment. So I'll probably get hundreds of thousands of people with that comment. Uh, I will accept my Barbra Streisand. So... <laughs> anyway, uh, here is your uh, Moksha desktop. Uh, you can see it's uh, it's very um, uh, it's just very minimalistic. Uh, we can uh, right click, and this is giving us just what's in our favorites list. Um, our left click gives us here's the, again that favorites list, and then we have our full system memory over here. Here's our various places. We have a quick launcher allows us to quickly go to uh, go to different set, uh, places that we have. So. Uh, let me get out of there. Uh, okay, we have we can do take the screenshot. We have about the the operating system. Here's about the desktop, about Bodhi Linux. We can restart Bodhi Linux from there. So we have uh, those options there. And here is inside of our settings. You know, I did not see the uh, I did not see the the uh, desktop the, like the screen settings before. Uh, so once again, they're they're not there. Here's our various desktops, and we have kind of widgets up there. Now, these various things are put on here with those iTabs, which you can adjust, you can modify, you can add things to.
So inside of our main menu here, you can see we already looked at the software um, that uh, that was listed. Nothing out there. Uh, I did actually add the uh, the solitaire games just to test out how the one tool they have is the App Center. Now I am not a fan of how they did this App Center. It is a web browser, so it is going online, and then you just kind of click through what you're looking for, and it does give us the good thing about it is it gives us. Uh, information about what everything is, but it's all web browser web browser based. Here's the installation, and then it'll just ask us, would we like to do this? So I'm not sure if this is as secure as running it through Synaptic or through the terminal. I just don't know. It seems to me like this type of approach is open to a man-in-the-middle attack. That'd be better if they gave us an actual software package. The other thing that I will mention here is that uh, when you first boot the system up and you try and install anything, it's going to tell you the package isn't found. That is because you have to run a sudo apt update first okay there's no repositories in the system until you run it so and there's nothing in here that tells us that and there's nothing in here that suggests that we need to boot up a terminal and do something and there's really no other GUI package manager so basically I have to go in I have to either boot the the terminal or boot up synaptic package manager runner updates update or cache and then I can use the app center and there's nothing specified in the app center that says you should do that well, that I recall uh, I'll probably make a liar of myself but let's uh, let's pull up that app center again and see if I am correct about that I'm pretty sure I am so here's the app center so here it just tells us this is the App Center, search for software. Um, then you can uh, note App Center software may be installed in the terminal using sudo apt install package name or via Synaptic Package Manager. It doesn't tell us anything that we have to do that. So if you're a new user, just be aware you have to boot up a terminal and run your sudo apt update before you can use the um, before you can use the this tool. But once you do use it, then it's going to work out pretty well. So let's look under here. So here's your Clementine. So that is really what uh, what our system here looks like. Uh, having a look at our settings panel, this is what our settings panel looked at well, it looks like. We saw it very briefly when I was fixing my screen resolution. But just to show you a little bit better what it looks like. Here's your GTK application and themes. Here's your icons. You can see we're using Moksha green everywhere. Here's your themes. And then your colors, your fonts, your borders. I actually, I kind of like this one because of the, the solid green. It's kind of fun. Uh, as far as running your favorite applications, so if I want to add my Clementine to the favorite applications, I pull this up, I hit the add button. You'll see it'll toggle the dot. I tried, lock. you can't click on it, double click on it. Um, and I probably have to, let's hit apply. There you go. So there's your Clementine is in there. So you just need to highlight something and hit the add or hit the remove if it's already added. So if I want to take leaf pad off, hit remove, do that. And now you can see that leaf pad has been removed. So we can adjust the order of things as well. So if you want to put things in a certain order, making it quicker to grab various applications, you can do that. Here's your various bars. So we have our Chromium is on there, our terminology, our Thunar. So that is down here. This is the applications on our bar. So if I want to add our new Clementine, it's just the same exact process. Apply. Now you'll see that Clementine is now in the bottom. All right. So that is how our iBar application works there. And let's see. Here's our uh, screen lock applications. Uh, what is on the screen lock, screen unlock, restart applications, and here's desktop environments. So you can only launch single instances. You can load the X uh, resources, modifier maps. You can start the GNOME services on login, start KDE services on login. So if you're using things that rely on those services like keychains or things like that, that's how you're going to want to turn those on so that uh, you know, if you're reliant on GNOME keychains for something, which you probably are if you're using your system for like email or things like that, you might want to go in there and turn that guy on. Everything else in here is pretty self-explanatory. Here's your main menu settings. Here's your, uh, here's your applications. I don't know. I'd have to look through. So uh, favorites, applications. I think that's this one here. So here's your favorites. Here's your applications. And that's kind of what we're seeing there. So there are, uh, there are a lot of uh, interesting things in this desktop. It is certainly a, a neat place to, to spend some time. I actually ran this for about a month or so on OpenSUSE. 
uh, when I did that. It was I'm, I'm, maybe I did Enlightenment. This is very very similar to Enlightenment. They're based on the same thing, of course. So this is what we get. Uh, it is definitely a a fun and a fascinating build. Uh, let's see if snaps are enabled by default. Uh, snap list up. Oh, uh, snap is not found, but can be installed. Ooh, snap is not even installed despite being based on Ubuntu. Let's see. Flat pack list. Flat pack is not installed. So you can install snap. You can install flat pack if you'd like to. Those are not installed by default. So it is truly a very de blend, de bloated system. Um, I'm not a huge fan of this application launcher, like the application search. It seems to me like it's uh, open to some. Uh, to some possible vulnerabilities there. Uh, let's have a look at the, uh, we can't search for anything. I have to just go in and find the applications directly here. Here's your Synaptic Package Manager. Enter your super secret password. That's definitely not one, two, three. So up here, when you first boot this up, you can actually come up here and you can reload, mark all upgrades, things like that. So you can get all of your system upgrades like that. Uh, overall, I think, uh, um, Bodhi is definitely an interesting look. Uh, it's a fascinating little desktop and certainly one to have a look at. Uh, it is uh, what I like about this newer version is uh, it is a lot more streamlined. I am noticing it moves a lot faster, feels a lot less buggy than when I've looked at it in the past, making this a good ideal system for uh, for a system that doesn't have a lot of system resources. Let me see. Nope, HTOP is not installed. Let me actually install that while I talk about things here. So here, we'll just go ahead and do that. Uh, sudo apt install HTOP. I didn't notice if there's uh, anything else, uh, any other uh, system monitors in there or not. So we'll just run that. So we're running, wow, 280 megabytes. Yeah, if you need something that runs, that looks kind of sweet and looks uh, and, uh, you know, is pretty um, pretty low key there, then uh, this this is probably your your one. That's, uh, that's a fun one. All right, so uh, definitely a, a low range system. Feels very snappy. Has a lot of nice modern look and feel to it. And uh, this one here will have a lot of those options for NVIDIA being set up already. Uh, just don't use that uh, S76. Um, it has a few different kernel options for you, and they will eventually have that full application package should you want to use that and just use all those default applications. Otherwise, you know, just go through the system and install the applications that you want. Um, on the downside, of course, I'm not a huge fan of this uh, application launcher. I think that going onto a website to click... Uh, and install applications. I think it opens them up to a man in the middle type attack, uh, which is a problematic thing, especially with that uh, video we just did the other day looking at the uh, free download manager uh, on the legitimate site was distributing malware uh, because of a, of a website hack. So we want to be careful about going online to websites to download applications. And I think that their own curated system could apply because if their site is hacked, that could be a problematic thing. However, it does appear that it's probably just calling what's inside of your apt cache anyway, so it might be secure. I just don't know all of the fundamentals about that. If you know down below, leave those underneath your Barbara Streisand type comments. Uh, that'd be great to know <laughs> either way. So anyway, uh, that is Bodhi. Let me know your thoughts about it. Uh, I think it's kind of fun. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'll throw it on my writing computer if MX Linux craps itself. Uh, but uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy... Switching to Linux.